So in the last few weeks, what we've done is kind of look at some of these vibration causes and, and some of the characteristics of vibration, how we can read the vibration. But um, sometimes some of these faults, uh, machine faults, can always turn up on an FFT or a time waveform, kind of looking very similar. So um, there's one more step that we can do, an investigative step, that, which is uh, called phase analysis. And so uh, this week, what I wanted to ask Paul was just to talk a little bit about phase analysis, how we can use it to further investigate some of these machine faults and, uh, and diagnose what's going on with the machine. So basically phase in vibration is a tool that we use to confirm certain faults. So for instance, as you know, in vibration, a lot of faults happen at one times turning speed. Imbalance happens at one times turning speed. Misalignment happens at one times turning speed. Also looseness can happen at one times turning speed. Uh, bent shaft, one times turning speed. So there's many, many faults that all happen at one times turning speed. So how do we differentiate or tell which one is which? Because they all look exactly the same on the spectrum. So the way that we do this is we use phase. And so what phase is, is phase is how two pieces of equipment vibrate in relation to each other. And then what we do is we freeze them at an instance in time. And then what we do is we measure the phase angle between, let's say this is a motor and over here is a gearbox. And what we'll do is we'll measure the phase angle between the two pieces and these phase angles will tell us what fault there is. So for instance, in balance, the phase would be a steady phase. And if you move the sensor from vertical or from vertical to horizontal like this, then you would have a 90 degrees phase shift. So you would move. So if you had your piece like this, you have your sensor up here in the top. So whatever your phase reading is here and you move it 90 degrees, that phase angle will change by 90 degrees. If it stays steady, then it's in balance. Misalignment happens at a phase of 180 degrees. So misalignment would still happen at one times, like in balance, but they show at different phases. Looseness, again, would show at a different phase. So what we do is we use phase to confirm a fault. So we can have phase where we have two pieces of equipment, freeze them, measure the phase angle by the, between the two, that'll tell us something, or we can have phase against a fixed point. So when you guys do balancing and you have your little light on for here balancing, then what we're doing is we're taking the phase. So the heavy spot here happens at a certain part on the roll at a certain phase angle. And then, so what we're doing is we're measuring the phase against a fixed point. So this fixed point would be our little light our trans our photo eye. And then what we do is we measure the angle and phase opposite of rotation. So if the roll is turning, we're gonna balance this piece of equipment and it's turning in the clockwise direction, then we measure the phase opposite. So, you know, we have our little bit of tape on the roll that goes past the photo eye here every time. So that's gonna be zero. Then opposite of rotation, so 90, 180, 270 degrees. So we can use phase when we're looking for a heavy spot. So we know in, uh, in balancing, when we're looking at a heavy spot, we can have three mil of vibration at 298 degrees. So that would be three mil of vibration at 298 to be over around here somewhere. So that's another way that we use phase to identify where the heavy spot is on a roll when we're balancing. So we can use phase against the fixed point like this, or we can use phase between two pieces of equipment. So, for instance, if we were using phase and I was looking for a misalignment, so here I have my motor, I have my coupling, and then let's say, I don't know, this is my gearbox over here. So what I can do is say, for instance, if this is misaligned, all right? So I look at my spectrum for misalignment, and it shows some one times vibration. It shows a bit of two times vibration. It might show some other vibration in this. So I don't really know. I know that I got something happening at one times here. Is it imbalance? Is it misalignment? Is it whatever? I don't know. So what I do then is I take a phase reading. So I put one sensor over here and I put another sensor over here. And now these two pieces of equipment are shaking. 
and now I freeze them. And then what I do is I look at the phase angle between the two pieces. If it's misalignment, the phase angle is going to be 180 degrees. So certain phase angles will identify certain faults. Misalignment always happens at 180 degrees. Now, here's another one that's kind of a little, if you get your head around, a bent shaft. So what a bent shaft will do is here's a bearing. Here's a bearing on this side. And then we have our bent shaft through here, right? So once again, bent shaft shows up at one times. Okay, so is it a bent shaft? Is an imbalance shows up at one time? Is misalignment shows up at one time? They're all different. So what we do for this is we do phase. So if you think of this bent shaft turning every revolution, so the phase on these two in the vertical direction are going to be the same. These phase, so the phase, this will be zero phase angle, this will be zero. They'll stay the same, so they'll always be in phase in the vertical direction. Now what happens if we put our sensors on the faces like this axially? What's going to happen to this now? When this turns, now we're going to go every revolution, these bearings are going to go like this. So when we do this, 180 degrees in the axial direction, zero in the vertical direction. So phase dependent on if you're taking it actually, if you're taking it vertically, can be show you different angles. So with the bent shaft, the phase and the horizontal or the vertical direction is going to be the same, going to stay steady. But when we do the phase here on the axial, it's going to be 180 degrees apart. So we're using phase again to confirm that we have a bent shaft. Another thing with phase that we have to do is that when we do phase, the sensors are in the same direction. So when we're talking about phase, so in this case here, when I have a sensor on this side, and now I got to take the sensor and move it over to this side to take a reading, what I have to do is correct for the angle that I'm changing. The sensors are supposed to be pointing in the same direction to do phase. So whatever angle I have on this side, doesn't matter if it was 90 degree angle, then what I have to do is add 180 degrees onto this number. So now the sensors, if we've corrected the sensors and now they're pointing in the same direction. So if you have uh, on a roll you're doing balancing, you should always have the sensors in the same direction. So you shouldn't have one sensor on the roll on this side and then one sensor on the roll on the other side here. They should be on the same orientation. But sometimes when we're doing an axial reading, we can't do that. We have to put the sensor on in the opposite direction. So then one of these angles, we have to correct for moving that sensor across like that. Okay, so just something about phase that you should remember if you're ever out on the job doing that, this could mess you up pretty good here, okay? So just remember that, all right? That's how we use phase. Basically, we're using phase to balance. So we're against the fixed point to find the heavy spot, or we're using phase to confirm some kind of a fault. So different faults happen at different phases. They all happen at the same one times per revolution. A lot of faults are the same, so that's how we differentiate between all those faults that happen at one times is that the phase angles of these, all these faults are different. So basically we use phase to confirm a diagnosis a lot of times. Also, we could use phase to look at how something, how much, for instance, we could look at the vibration of a pedestal for a motor or something like this. So we could look at, put a sensor up here, put a sensor down here, put a sensor in the middle. And of course, as this thing rocks back and forth, it's gonna be more movement on the top, greater angle than on the bottom. So we can use phase for those type of situations. There are many, many different things we can use it for. I don't wanna to get too in depth because you folks are just starting out. So just for your purposes, we use phase to confirm faults. And then of course, when you look at a drawing, what we'll have is I'll show you the motor, like so, once again. And then what there'll be these little dots like this, and so what we'll do, and so what these are called is phase bubbles. And so what we'll do is something's in phase. We put a line in here, line in here. They're exactly the same place. We know they're in phase. So they're vibrating together. 
if they're out of phase, so this end here is at 90, this end over here is at 270 like this, then we know it rocks like this. So when something's in phase, when it's out of phase, it rocks like this. So if they're looking for misalignment, it would be 180 degrees out of phase. So this phase bubble, 90, this one over here, 270. As soon as I look at those bubbles, I could see there's 180 degrees difference between the two. Misalignment. So basically there'll be a bubble here. There could also be a bubble out in the axial direction. So you do phase readings all over and then basically make a drawing and then use these little symbols. So we don't put that this is 90 degrees. We just know this circle is 180 degrees and we just put a slash in wherever those angles are. And that way we can just quickly look at the phase bubbles and we can tell how far it's out of phase. So it just makes it a little quicker to read the, the bubbles in that. So. so basically that's pretty much the down and dirty on phase for, okay.